Welcome if you're coming on. I think I've got it. Okay. Oh, so good to see you here. I'm realizing I'm going to shift my position a little bit. Welcome, welcome. So excited to share a little bit with you today and invite my dear friend and colleague, Don Ross from Bit by Bit Body Works to come on and talk a little bit about yoga, particularly yoga therapy for recovery for injury prevention, and for pain relief. Yoga therapy is such a beautiful and comprehensive practice that addresses the whole person. And Don and I are going to share a little bit about our upcoming training with you, answer some questions, and share some strategies that we've implemented both in our personal lives and our practice that really help in the process of recovery. So I see Don joined. Let's, yes, here you are. Um, I got an unable to join notice. Let me try again. Let's try this one. Hopefully we can get the technology working. Instagram Live is always a little tricky. Yes, there you are. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so good to see you. Me too. It has been a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of our, life our has passed in between. Our kids are a lot older. Oh my goodness. Yes, I know. I was just thinking the same thing. The boys are not little anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to have you here. I've been, you know, I've been following you since we met. Maybe we should share a little bit about that and then give some context for sure. our time together today. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Um, go ahead. We, um, we both had the great fortune to, um, before COVID, be in the last group of an in-person training, a 300-hour yoga teacher training uh, with Jules Mitchell. And uh, we were roomies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we were both yeah. yoga therapists at the time. So we weren't yeah. seeking the training for professional development and certification as much as we were seeking it kind of just to deepen our understanding and for the beautiful approach that Jules brings to yoga biomechanics and understanding the body and how the body works. Yeah, um, understanding but, the tissue yeah. mechanics is a big piece. And that's a big piece um, for sure in terms of navigating injury and pain um, through using yoga or as a yoga practitioner, um, definitely. Yeah, I think what I know we've both experienced just from following you now for some time, we both had our own journey with personal injury and because we're, we live these physically active lives in sports and staying really, really, you know, busy, but also challenging yourself and not kind of falling into a, a life of sedentary um, kind of ways of being. So there's always the possibility and the potential for injury. And there's always kind of the guarantee in life for pain. But there are ways to recover. Yes. And I think too, with injury, um, you know, the more you do something, the more likely it is like, that's how insurance companies, that's how uh, it works with them is the reason that there's a higher premium put if you use your car to drive to and from work is it's more likely that that's when you'll get in an accident. <laughs> and so, you know, if yoga is the thing that you do and you do a lot of yoga, chances are you're going to get injured doing it at some point. If you do a lot of running, chances are that thing that you spend lots of hours doing is where you can potentially get injured. And um, there's a, a physical pain with that, but also an emotional pain um, that can definitely happen. Uh, I know this January, like my first day out actually skiing. So our family, a big, a big winter sport that we do is downhill skiing. And I sustained like a really bad calf strain that literally had me um, not be able to bear weight, like, or put the whole sole of my foot on the, the ground. And I was black and blue from like behind the knee to behind my toes. <laughs> And um, I 
really quickly figured out what I could do. Um, and I did stuff I could do. I also let myself be really sad when it happened and that I was going to be sidelined for a while. And I didn't know how long, um, how long that was going to be. Uh, I mean, I'm, a, I'm going to say like I downhill skied four days a couple of weeks ago in a row and skied hard and not a twinge. I've been out running, I've been out hiking and it's feeling really solid. So, um, but knowing how to work with yourself, especially when the things you love doing you maybe get injured doing or figuring out how to get back to them in a way that um works yeah yeah, yeah it is it, it is such an emotional mental physical kind of process of recovery it's the biopsychosocial model and so we're addressing all layers of the person and understanding and having kind of the knowledge to be informed of how to move and how to recover and how hard to push yourself is so important. And I think that that's going to be a big focus of the time together in the training that we're creating or the training that we're coming together to offer this coming weekend. And I would love to chat a little bit with you, Don, about, you know, some of the common injuries that maybe you see coming from people who practice yoga primarily mm. in your practice. Yeah, well, I work with a kind of a, I, I either see people one-on-one -on -one that have been doing um, like a long time yoga practitioner and things start to like not work well and they have pain or discomfort. Um, or I see people that are doing things and they use yoga to support those activities, whether it be running or uh, cycling or downhill skiing or backpacking, other kind of physical pursuits. And yoga is a piece of what they do to take care so that they feel good doing those things are kind of the two camps of people that I see one-on-one. -on -one. Um, in terms of like on the yoga mat, Sometimes what happens is we get kind of attached to an idea of what the pose or the breath practice or the flow is supposed to do or look like. And it can kind of work against us. So an example of this might be um, something I see and I figured out for my own self was like say take downward facing dog so it's pretty common to teach that um, say you're coming to it from all fours and I'm gonna push and take my hips up and there can be a focus on elongating the spine and there can be a focus on getting the heels to the ground and if my focus is creating this inverted V shape with getting my heels to the ground and having length through my spine, that's one way I could approach it. But if I'm somebody that uses my hips a lot in terms of like running and downhill skiing, I might not want to approach downward dog that way because I might want to really foster the movement at my hips. And a way to do that is say I'm on all fours and I think about keeping my knees bent, but taking my knees back. So I keep my knees bent, but I take my knees from being down on the floor to pitching them off the floor and towards the wall behind me. All of a sudden, I get rotation in my, in my hip socket rather than rotation at my ankle, which can be really helpful if I'm doing activities that require me to have good mechanics at my hips so you can start to kind of play with the yoga poses in a way to think about not just do i want to stretch this or do i want to stretch that but what are the mechanisms that i need day to day that i use in my body that need to work really well and now i'm going to take the yoga poses 
and use and do them in a way that actually facilitates those things working really well. Yeah, fascinating. It's such an individualized approach and one that you can actually, I think, begin to offer in a broader perspective so people can explore it in their own bodies. Absolutely. And just, yeah, the mm -hmm. depth of understanding that is available to us when we look at it outside of the dogmatic way that is just very alignment oriented or cue driven to developing curiosity and understanding how the body works and moves on a deeper mm -hmm. level is, is such a gift. Um, yeah. Yeah. So my, from my portion on Sunday the 16th, it's going to be taking some common yoga poses um, and doing just like I kind of described with downward dog. It's also going to include looking at the feet differently than we kind of do and looking at how we get the arches of the feet on board beyond this idea of a tripod because something that never really made sense to me and I always kind of struggled with is if I if I spend a bunch of time getting somebody say into Dasna and I'm gonna cue a ton about getting them really like in the tripod of the foot and a wide, you know, front of the a wide transverse arch and spreading the toes and lifting the toes and rooting through the feet and all this. And then the next thing I'm gonna get them to do is step forward. Why wouldn't I do things so their feet are ready? To instead be stationary and rooted to actually be ready to move from one foot to the other foot to actually locomote and that's a big piece that kind of gets missed in a lot of um a lot of the time in yoga and when we kind of, kind of understand some of the design of the foot a little bit differently than just making a bigger base of support so I'm more stable. We actually, there's more fast twitch afferent nerve endings in our feet than there are in our hands. Our hands are meant to linger and check things out. And, but our feet are actually designed to get us quickly from one onto the other. <laughs> And so how we can use that in a yoga practice that actually, again, might have some up chain effects that are really beneficial in other things that we do off, off of the mat and on the mat. Yeah, yeah, it's um, so important. <laughs> yeah. The feet as the foundation and understanding. I, I had quite a journey with foot injuries over the past couple of years. Um, after a, an avulsion fracture, hmm. which is like the tendon pulling for those yeah. that don't know, the tendon yeah. is literally pulling the bone away. And so it takes a long time to heal. And in the healing process, there was like a constant little method and moments of re-injury. And it just, it awakened my understanding so much of the feet, not only in relation to how we locomote, but how how they're interconnected with the whole fascial line and how they affect the pelvic floor and how they affect the breath and the mechanics of movement overall. And so taking the idea of yoga, which is really not about shapes in any way or form, it's, it's about self inquiry <laughs> and self study and skill in action and translating that so that we can bring that to our clients and our students so there's a deeper understanding and it's not as dogmatic in the approach there's variety and curiosity and diversity and um and that's the, the goal i know don's training this this sunday april 16th is going to be a phenomenal look at the feet i only got to experience a little of your brilliance in the training with jewels but i've been always deeply impressed with your skillfulness and ability to get cross ideas that are really important in a way that people can take and make relevant to their lives and their movement and their activities so that it really does serve you not just now but across the spectrum of life and all things that you do <laughs> yeah. yeah 
Thank you, Jeanette. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for what um, I'm going to be sharing on Sunday in those five hours. And it's going to be, you know, a lecture a little bit. Um, and, and then we'll be getting up and doing some mini, pra a mini practice to actually see it in action and feel it and have people have different experiences and, you know, discuss that. And then I'll teach another concept. So we'll be kind of going back and forth is my intention between some sitting lecturing and then some skill, you know, you know skillful execution and experience, experiential learning, and then some discussion and then back to some theory. So we'll be kind of ping ponging between both. Yeah. And, and why is it important for yoga teachers? Do you think that like to have this understanding? Um, I, I, I think because there's a ton of misunderstanding about, I don't know, I was talking to someone the other day and the foot has kind of become the core, like what the core was in the 90s in terms of all this cueing before we move, et cetera, et cetera, um, around the core. I mean, I've been teaching movement since 98, so I'm kind of dating myself, but a long time. And, you know, in the 90s, there was a piece of information taken out of a study and run with that basically at the end of the study, the, the big question was, we need to do more studies. But people took this one thread of the fact that people with low back pain had uh, transverse abdominis that fired later than people without low back pain. But but why is that? So everyone hooked on to engage the TAs, engage the TAs, right? <laughs> and I see that happening with the foot. And it's also getting mixed in there too with this idea uh, um, that I've seen for the last number of decades around posture and good and bad. And so we have this association with a good foot and a bad foot, a strong foot and a weak foot. And my intention is to help people actually see when you get input and pressure into the right parts of a person's foot, the foot does what it's designed to do. Um, yeah, it, it does what it's designed to do. So to help people actually see that so they can save time. <laughs> you know, it took me a lot of years kind of chasing the tail my tail in this and um, yeah. And, and so you can actually see where you can create really effective change for people simply. And without the fact of you have to do this for a long time before there will be a change. <laughs> because again, when we get, we're, we're a pressure system. So when we get, a pressure input to the right place, it sets up a whole cascade of information. We've all experienced it before in moments of our movement where there has been no debate of how to do something. You just do it and it like flows and it's like instinct. And um, yeah, so Sunday is going to be about giving people some of that taste through the feet. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. You know, having, I, I come from a, a lot of experience working with elders. You know, generally people over 65, but always in the context of subacute or long-term care. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you see again and again and again, as it is a normal part of aging, that there are gait changes. Mm -hmm. And once there are gait changes, we move from walking in a functional way to perhaps shuffling a little bit. And then there becomes a little bit of fear. And then there becomes a little bit more of a shuffling pattern and a gait dysfunction, which leads to risk of falls. And so I think also for any teacher who finds themselves working with a clientele in you know the 60 to 70 plus range, this is going to be kind of an imperative understanding that will inform the teaching and, and the yoga practice so that we're not only just helping people find that kind of flexibility and mobility, but there's peace of mind.
mind in understanding that the body is set up to seek homeostasis, to seek, you know, right ways of moving and being that support feeling good and, and harmony between the various systems of the body. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's a brilliant start and it's, it is literally the foundation. <laughs> and so when we work from that place, there's, there's such an opening of understanding. Um, I wonder, would you, would you mind sharing, uh, do you have a success story that is like one of your favorites, perhaps even your, um, <laughs> oh, oh, well there, yeah, there was somebody last week, um, we've worked together for a couple of years. Um, initially this individual had very acute um posterior pelvic floor like spasm t to to the point of like emergency room visits yeah and, and um we they they also saw a pelvic floor physio and um their doctor and then with me and I kind of worked at it from the place of this person had the activities that lit them up and that they did with their partner were taken away because of this pain. And so, and they required gait, they required lo locomoting, um, hiking, cross country skiing. And so I, approached it from the place of these, these other people are managing this piece. I'm going to help this person and see if we can get some gains through gait and through, through using the, the feet and understanding the cyclical nature of the gait cycle um, and how our, our, each of our legs actually and feet do different things. Um, and that doesn't need to be trained out of us. Um, and they're cross country skiing 10 kilometers. They have no symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's many people working on the care, but the piece that I was working with was giving them back the ability to A, do their yoga practice and B, do the things they love doing off the mat, out in nature with their partner. That's beautiful. That's so exciting. I love that. And it's very common to have yoga as an adjunct therapy to other things that people are doing. And it definitely has its place in, in all realms of care, whether it's psychological care or physiological care, that the yoga practice, whether it be what you do on your mat or what you're doing in your meditation, just all play a role in creating a whole person approach to well-being. And I'm stoked to have you. I'm stoked I'm going to be teaching uh, the following two Sundays from the first about pain, all about modern pain science, about ways of navigating pain, the Ayurvedic role of in pain support and the yogic approach, as well as just what I've learned over 26 years of working with hospice patients and end of life care and managing my own stuff. And so there's so much wisdom and so much implementation that you can just not only learn in a way that's very knowledge based, but also then take and embody and find ways to apply it to your life and to your students and clients lives so that so that we're really trying to make it relevant and functional and foundational, but also complex enough that you can take it and run with it for some time. And yeah. it will really be transformative to your teaching and your practice. So yeah, let us know if you have any questions. <laughs> oh, there's a few. Um, go on. Yeah, yeah, I do see. Uh, hello, welcome if you're here. Thank you so much for joining. And do reach out if you've got questions or you can go ahead and sign up. There's still space. Uh, it, well, there's always space. It's via Zoom, so. <laughs> but there's still time. And you can definitely come and join us live, which I think you'll get the most from but there will be recordings available as well if you need to miss some of it there's going to be beautiful handouts uh, opportunity to take part in a mm. community on a platform that you'll be able to ask questions and receive feedback and reflection uh, and thank you priya thank you for sharing 
Yeah. 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 I, the allopathic medical system can only take us so far because it does, it really is looking through one lens. I find it's looking through a very physiological approach and there are, it's multifaceted and that's, that's where the, the yoga tradition becomes such a beautiful way of working with persistent challenges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Don and I have both seen profound effects from it in our lives and our practices. It's why we do what we do. And uh, yeah, please do reach out. I would love to see if this can support you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the, those nerves that come in out of the spine and in through the pelvic bowl, there's a couple of big hubs right around the knee where you can work with the other end. So this individual had um, acute pedendal nerve pain and the other end of that nerve is around the knee. So I, I didn't have to work in the pelvis directly to affect change. Yeah. And I think one of the fascinating big <laughs> paradigm shifts that we're having around persistent pain, mm -hmm. you know, is that it doesn't necessarily correlate to tissue damage. And so there might have been an, an, an incident or an event where something w was fractured or there was an injury or there was an accident but then the pain lasts much longer than it takes for the tissue to actually recover. And that's common. And that's one of the things that we're going to be exploring. Yeah. And Jules's book is a great um, reference point for that because I, I think we forget a lot in terms of like the soft tissue, what happens. Yeah, it is years. So, you know, in the first few, days there is um inflammation comes to the area to get rid of the debris and clean up the site so to speak but then there's there's stuff that happens then a couple of weeks later and then the remodeling portion where we actually need to load things in the accesses of load that we want to be using it and that takes from one to three years it can be three years before your brain isn't paying attention to the area or hyper vigilant of it or that the tissue actually has fully remodeled and re repaired so yeah yeah, and how, how do you feel about healing potential for long-term kind of challenges? Um, oh, do you mean like say if you had an injury from years ago and maybe you didn't do the things because we were all 20 and mm -hmm. thought we knew better <laughs> than you? Yes. And then circling back around right. um, maybe a decade later, <coughs> our cells are we're always able to communicate with our cells so whether those whether that extracellular matrix where those fibroblasts are how we use the body communicates with those fibroblasts and it's that communication that has the fibroblasts create new collagen that new collagen molecule then determines whether it's supposed to behave like bone or a tendon or a ligament or <laughs> any number of tissues of the body and it starts to remodel so it can happen until our last breath it can happen yeah, but... <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, I've really felt just so strongly in my being from what I've had the privilege of witnessing and, you know, from from years in subacute and long-term care to my own experience working with the Rutgers football team and Navy SEALs and elders and everything has the potential to heal. <laughs> well, and even the word heal, um, it can be loaded for people i would even say everything has the potential to respond differently um 
to its internal and external environment. Do different. That's the tagline of your business and I love it so much. So yeah, do different. This, this training will give you that opportunity and that invitation help develop your, your inner wisdom of the way your body works and curiosity about how you can move better and, and your breathe better. Eye, better. You're going to, you're going to just see things differently. You, you will see things uh, differently and things will make um, different sense to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm so excited, Don, and I'm really grateful for your time today sharing and, and your wisdom and very much looking forward to having you. Uh, this is the modular part of our more extensive yoga therapy foundations mm -hmm. training for teachers who find themselves working privately <coughs> and or, you know, moving out of the studio model and really learning how to support individuals. So we are opening it up. You are so welcome and invited to join if this feels like it resonates or calls to you. I'll drop a link in the bio and um, yeah, very awesome. warm <laughs> hearted gratitude to you and to everyone who's joined and thank you so much yeah. for sharing. Mm -hmm. It's a gift to hear from you. Yeah, you, you've, put, you've put a lot of hours into putting this program together and uh, it's a really beautiful program. So I'm just happy to be one offer one teeny tiny part yeah. <laughs> for now thank you so much you know when i was putting it together i was like who's who do i know that's the expert in this and when i thought of injury and recovery i mean you were the first to come to mind and i was so honored that you said yes so it's going to be a treat i'm really excited and i'm sure i'm going to learn a ton as well so do join us uh it's happening in two parts go ahead and reach out if you have any questions and there is both a payment plan and a scholarship available if that is something that you need if you're of the global majority or you know have a challenge just reach out and we want to make it really accessible and remove the barriers to entry for you because everybody deserves this knowledge of how the body works so yeah. thank you again thanks so much Jen. we'll see you on sunday see you soon bye love